Have you ever wondered why there is no games for Mac OS? I'm sure you were, and that's why we are going to take apart this complicated topic. Because we all know that there was a time where Mac OS was holding the crown of the best gaming OS. Apple even romance with video game console market and modern MacBooks have proven that they can run recently released games pretty well. But let's start from the beginning, as always, from power user perspective. And by beginning, I mean really beginning. Apple II, second Apple Incorporated product, the successor of Steve Wozniak Apple I computer and one of the world's first highly successful mass-produced microcomputers. It was sold with a main logic board, switching power supply, keyboard, case, manual, game paddles and cassette tape containing the game, Breakout. As Apple II was aiming at the home users and consumer market, it was a brave step for Apple to include recently developing gaming aspect to their second product from the start. It turned out to be a big success, because Apple II drew attention of many game developers, not only because of additional game paddles, support of 6502 assembly language, but also an 8-bit system capable of displaying colors. Even if not everyone had a color display at home, the possibility of making games in more than few colors was a game-changer at this time. The competition in the form of Commodore PET 2001 and TRS-80 didn't have this feature yet. Apple even redesigned their own logo to promote this feature. This Apple product was a paradise for game programmers and in following years we got a lot of good games, starting from Castle of Wolfenstein, Swashbuckler, Ultima, Jordan Mechner Karateka, the top seller game at this time and definitely the biggest game hit of 1984, Loadrunner, E.T. Comeback, Archon, The Light and the Dark, Beyond Castle Wolfenstein, The Oregon Trail, Space Quest, Maniac Mansion, Tetris, Arkanoid, Ultima 5, and of course, legendary Jordan Mechner Prince of Persia. Game-changing title, with gameplay that no other game could offer at the time, real trendsetter, that define how modern games should look like. While creating this game, Jordan used rotoscoping animations and showed us the maximum potential of Apple II computer. With Prince of Persia, Apple Computers was officially part of a big gaming history. Even a publisher called MacPlay was founded in 1990 with a mission to publish games dedicated to Macintosh systems. In the next years, we can see that macOS was not slowing down and great titles were coming to Apple operating system. And in 1996, when Steve Jobs was still absent from the position of Apple CEO, Apple had a true romance with video game market. Open technology is, is technology derived from the Power Mac architecture. Uh, it's been derived here at Apple Computer, represents sophisticated computing, but in a consumer appliance. One of the uh, exciting parts about Pippin is that it repackages very powerful technology, PowerPC technology from Apple, Macintosh operating system, uh, the very best in CD-ROM technology and audio quality, uh, into an appliance that's easy to use. They released gaming console called Apple Pippin Atmark, with Bandai and Mitsubishi collaboration. Visionary gaming device with internet connectivity, personal computer features like full native support of keyboard and ball mouse in the middle of gaming controller, but it failed tragically for many reasons. The price was definitely one of them, paying twice as much as PlayStation 1 at lunch. After this failure, Apple slowed down with their gaming aspirations 
Steve Jobs fortunately returned to Apple and started to reconstruct the company. And this time, nothing revolutionary was happening in Mac gaming segment, but we got a bunch of great titles like Duke Nukem 3D, Carmageddon, Fallout, Tomb Raider 2 and 3, Quake 3 Arena, Starcraft, Age of Empires 1 and 2, Diablo 2, The Sims, Alien vs Predator 1 and 2, TSX. In 2001, Steve Jobs really wanted to open up Macs for gaming. That's why he invited on Apple conference stage one of the legends, John Carmack from ID Software to show us the first playable Doom 3 demo, fully working on Power Mac G4 equipped in GeForce 3. Something by one of the legends in 3D computer graphics and gaming, John Carmack from id Software. And John today, welcome John. Thank you. I'm in gaming engine, and this shows off some of the things that we can do with the power of the GeForce 3 in here. So the big trick that we're getting now is the final unification of lighting and shadowing across all surfaces in a game. And later, we got fantastic Halo 1 port on Mac computers. We are starting to see some great games come back to the map, but this is one of the coolest I've ever seen. This game is going to ship early next year from Bungie, and this is the first time anybody has ever seen it. So everything you're about to see is being rendered in real time on a Macintosh using OpenGL. supporting even full HD, the resolution that PC port of Halo 1 was unable to run. The problem was that games developers weren't interested as much in video games on Mac anymore. Apple devices were less popular and they couldn't even compare with the colossal popularity that Windows XP got around that time. From business point of view, it didn't pay off to port or create games on macOS. The ninth version of DirectX API from Microsoft, competing with OpenGL available on macOS, didn't help either. Apple took a step back and decided to focus more on aesthetics, design and user experience, targeting more mature customers. They gave up on toy-like colorful glossy design for more modern and functional looks. They obviously stopped caring about video games and gaming, so to avoid being associated with unmature stuff. Nowadays, Apple devices are not designed for gaming. They are created for smaller tasks and creative work, like editing photos in Photoshop. Also. You can't cheat the law of physics. There's no room for a big, chunky and energy-draining graphic card. Apple chose user experience over raw power. And that's why only indie developers are creating some less graphically intensive games on macOS. Some of the big publishers don't even mind to repair bugs on macOS versions of their programs. They are no bothering themselves with fixing them if only a small percentage of users are using Apple computers. Some of them don't even support their own macOS programs like Ubisoft Connect, even if their own games support macOS. But the doomsday has come to Mac gaming with the arrival of macOS Catalina. The support of all 32 bit applications, including video games, was stopped. This way, we lost a big part of previously working games. And after the transition from Intel processors to Apple Silicon, we lost another big chunk of games and applications designed for Intel architecture because not all applications work properly with Rosetta. And that's exactly the same situation that happened in 2005 when Apple transitioned from PowerPC chip to Intel. Rosetta also didn't work very well at that time. But that didn't mean that Apple doesn't have their own piece of cake in gaming segment. Thanks to iPhone and iOS, 
the video game market income are massive. Furthermore, we can run most of the iOS games with no issue on our MacBooks by just downloading them from the App Store or installing an API package. And that's the most popular way of playing games on macOS nowadays. There are of course some AAA games that support macOS on game platforms like Steam or Epic. Borderlands 3, Tomb Raider or Metro Exodus are fully available. They run and look pretty decent on a full HD resolution, being usually stocked around 60 FPS but the level of high temperature they provoke is a sin. If it comes to game controller support, Mac OS Ventura have no problem with Bluetooth controllers like PS4 and new Xbox One controllers at all. The problem starts when you have an older controller, for example Xbox 360 or first Xbox One Elite. Xbox 360 controller don't work wirelessly. Unfortunately, I don't have any cable to check this software out, but I heard that it works pretty great for Wired 360 controllers. For first Xbox One, Xbox One Elite and other controllers, I recommend to use third-party software like Enjoyable to remap buttons and convince controllers to work. In the newest Apple conference, they are trying their best sweet talk to convince customers that Apple products are great for gaming. And the new Mac Mini is also great for gaming, running demanding titles like No Man's Sky at even faster frame rates. And gamers can play titles like Resident Evil Village in console quality. But we all know that's way far away of truth. I suppose that we can expect a real gaming revolution on macOS when Apple finds out how to implement a big computing power without downgrading user experience that they worked on. Maybe some sort of Apple Cloud Gaming service or Tim Cook's successor could create product dedicated for gamers. Who knows? As of today, there are some ways to play games on macOS other than App Store or publisher platforms. First of all, you can use emulation software like Dolphin, DuckStation or OpenEmu to emulate games from consoles like GameCube, PlayStation 1, 2 and 3, Sega consoles and of course Wii. With a full Joy-Con support, that's crazy! That's a great channel by the way, worth of checking out if you want to emulate games on macOS. There is also a way to emulate .exe programs using applications like Wine or Play on Mac, or emulate whole Windows 11 OS with Parallels or VirtualBox. You can also install Windows 11 on your Intel-based macOS machine by using Bootcamp. It's pretty simple and is the best option to game on macOS. Problem is that you can't do it on Apple Silicon chip devices, due to a Windows lack of compatibility with the latest Apple chips. If there is a possibility in the future, I will definitely do a video about it. And if you are interested more on this topic, there is a whole dedicated community on Reddit called Mac Gaming. Do you have any favorite games on macOS? And what do you think about Apple gaming situation? Tell me in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe, that's really important to me. Thanks for watching, see you next time.